Okay, so let's finish up the basic concepts that we need in order to carefully describe motion, measure motion, calculate motion of something, independent of why it's moving that way. All right, recall we've got time, there are instants, now, 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 and there are intervals of time. Really an important distinction. Not, not hard, but important. Time one, time two, time three, time four, and the time between from earlier to later. Space, we've got position at any moment. Displacement, just the change of position, independent on how you got there. Distance, along the path, it does depend on how you got there. Uh, rate of travel, we've got velocity at any instant, which is both the speed and the direction. And just the speed. Average velocity versus average speed, so the last time. Now, let's talk about rate of change of motion, acceleration and average acceleration. These are concepts that are quite confusing. Uh, people confuse them all the time, initially. You can get them straight if you're careful. So looking at the notes that I give you and uh, working problems. So we just have to jump in, lay it out, and do it, and also keep a, keep a constant vigil. Try to keep it straight and uh, challenge yourself. So let's talk about this. Acceleration. When do you have acceleration? When are you accelerating? If your friend says accelerate, then they expect you to speed up. But in physics, we use the term acceleration much more generally. Okay? And there's a good reason for that. We'll see in Newton's laws. So we use the term accelerate. It's occurring whenever an object is changing motion. If you're changing motion, you're accelerating. So what is motion? Well, you can do that if you're changing speed. We say speed up or increase speed, slow down or decrease speed. So you can do that to, I'll say, increase speed. That's what most people think of acceleration. Or decrease speed, which also has another common name, and this still works, called deceleration. But deceleration is one possibility of acceleration. Speeding up, increasing speed, decreasing speed, all accelerating, okay, all changing motion. And or you could be turning. So you could keep the same speed and turn. Uh, as you enter a turn, usually you slow down. And as you exit, you might speed up. But that would be changing your motion, wouldn't it? And you could change abruptly or, or gradually. We'll talk about that in a second. So how else can you accelerate? You can turn or change direction. Now, you could be doing them both at the same time, as I said or turning at a constant speed, and we'll talk about that later. All right, so that's when you accelerate. So if your friend says accelerate, you can mess with them, right? You can slow down, or you can turn. Hey, accelerate. Uh, but don't do it in the car. Uh, I did it once. I won't tell you what happened. I walked by one class. <laughs> so, so the amount of acceleration, how much acceleration do you have? Well, the amount of acceleration is get a feel for it like this. If it's more abrupt change, if you have a more abrupt change, then you have a larger acceleration. Slam on the gas, slam on the brakes, crank the steering wheel. Those are large accelerations, generally not safe, large accelerations. Okay. A more gentle change is going to be a smaller number. Now, you'll get used to the numbers as you work problems. But So a gradual change, a gradual change usually what you want to do, especially if you're traveling on the freeway. And you, so a larger number is an abrupt change, and a smaller number is a gentle change. OK, that's the amount. What about the direction? So this will take time, but uh, let's just lay this out. The direction of the acceleration. Now, I'm going to use vector notation, which is the arrow on top of my variable. Okay, for now. If you're increasing speed and not turning, then the acceleration is parallel to the velocity in the same direction. Okay? So I would draw that up over here if I'm if my velocity is this way and 
actually, let me do it down here. If my velocity is this way, then I'd say my acceleration is also that way. And I see that picture and I go, ah, that's speeding up. Realize, of course, if my velocity is this way, and my acceleration is also that way, I am still speeding up. Okay? Both those mean I am increasing my speed. However, if my velocity is to the left or right, and my acceleration is opposite, then I'm decreasing speed. Decreasing speed and not turning, just one dimensional, Acceleration is parallel to negative v, that is its opposite. Okay? Important, really critical, you have to know this. Now, if the acceleration is neither parallel or opposite v, sometimes called anti parallel, then you're not changing the speed, constant speed, but you could be turning if you have an acceleration, and then the vector direction is perpendicular to V and into the turn. So let's take a look at that. That means that if you're moving some direction, doesn't matter, left or right, up or down, doesn't matter. Let's do it, uh, oh, let's move down. There's my velocity. And if my acceleration is this way, And that means that I'm going to be turning that way. If the acceleration is the other way, I'd be turning the other way. But it's neither parallel, increasing speed, nor anti-parallel, opposite, decreasing speed. So it's perpendicular. If I was increasing speed, there would be a part of the acceleration parallel and turning perpendicular. If I was decreasing speed, there would be a part of acceleration opposite and a part into the turn for turning. So in general, independent of your coordinates, you can be changing speed at a certain rate, parallel or opposite speed, and you can be turning at a certain rate. Gentle turn, abrupt turn. Gentle acceleration speeding up, abrupt. Now we're on the brake, gentle slow down, abrupt slow down. Okay, so let's go over here and take a look uh, a little bit more. So this conceptually, and we'll get into some, some problems that people can have. So the instantaneous acceleration, the, the acceleration at any instant, any moment, any state, is the rate at which the speed and or direction is changing at that moment. That's what it is. Okay? That's all it is. You'll use it, think it. You can't, just, you can't just listen and hear it once. With work problems, and you'll learn it as you go. It'll sink in. The average acceleration between any two states would be the overall change of velocity over the time. That is, the change of velocity from later to earlier over the time. In one dimension, it's easier than in two dimensions. We'll see vectors. Remember that the velocity can be positive or negative, depending on which way you chose to be positive or negative. In the limit, as delta t goes to zero, of course, we have, at a particular instant, the acceleration is defined as the derivative, or dv dt, at whatever time, at earlier, and later, at state one, at state three, again, I wouldn't use IMF, but folks do. So, um, so that's how we mathematically write that in symbols. What would the units be then? Okay, velocity could be any units you want. I mean, we could have meters per second for delta V, because if, if V is meters per second, then you know, five meter per second minus two meter per second is three meter per second. 
and the time could be seconds. Now remember, don't mess this up. So if you need to, better to get this right, multiply by one over seconds. Oops, hello, multiply across. That's meter per second squared. This is shorter to write, meter per second squared, we said. So you'll see that. But the meaning is a little bit lost. It is meters per second per second. How many meters per second every second are you increasing? How many meters per second per second are you decreasing? So that's what we're talking about. Now, of course, those aren't the only units that we use. Uh, you could say per hour. That's fine, but then you're just going to leave it like that. Those are mixed units. If you're talking about a car, you might want to know, hey, how many miles per hour am I picking up every second? If you're in any other country, you'd use kilometers per hour every second. Or if you're testing your braking, how many miles per hour per second am I losing every second? So those would be the units. And mixed units are perfectly fine. Just be careful, write them down. Now, common mistakes, where are we at on time? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. All right, perfect. So you've got this mostly, really, uh, we can only do so much talking about it and reading about it. Don't read, 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 read. You have this down, now work problems, then go back, reread as you're working. So, common mistakes. Uh, one. Negative acceleration. Sometimes in high school courses and dreadfully in college courses, sometimes people say negative acceleration means you're slowing down. And it kind of makes sense, except it's wrong. It's so wrong. Uh, you're going to be in big trouble if you think negative acceleration means slowing down. Why? Okay, well, which direction is positive? Positive, positive. Whatever direction you choose. I can choose this to be positive, right? I can choose down to be positive. Start with one dimension, so it doesn't matter. So that's how I'm choosing that to be positive. So if this guy is traveling here with a velocity, subscripted, whatever, and uh, this guy, yeah, whatever, traveling this way. They both have positive velocities, right? Positive velocities. Let's say for the circle on the left, don't try a too fancy a diagram. Waste your time to get into it and make it clear. So this one, let's say if I told you that the acceleration was this way, then what's happening? Well, speeding up, right? Now, if left is positive, this is positive, V. Acceleration is left, positive. And it means it's speeding up. In this case, suppose I say the acceleration is opposite V. That means what? It's slowing down. Graphically, that's what that means. How much? Well, just do the problem. If left is positive, then B is positive and A is negative. Oh, wait a minute. Slowing down is negative. Except, wait. Suppose we flip this. Now, suppose V is going to the right, which I chose to be negative to free your mind. The rest will fall. Now, V is negative for these guys. Now, in this case, what's happening? Increasing speed or decreasing speed? Increasing speed. Why? Because it is in the same direction as V. So it's increasing speed. V is negative because that's the negative direction by my choice. If V is negative, A is negative. If they're both negative, I'm speeding up in the negative direction. Here, a negative velocity means I'm speeding up in the negative direction. Here, a negative velocity means 
I'm slowing down while traveling in the positive direction. So it just depends. Just drop. You know, don't, don't try to remember the words. Just look at it. And of course, you can see the other example. What if the acceleration is this way? A little arrow up there to get us used to that. Well, the velocity is negative because I called left positive. So velocity is in the negative direction. The acceleration is in the positive direction, but I'm decreasing speed. So a negative acceleration here means slowing down, here means speeding up. Acceleration in the direction of the velocity, oops, oh, speed up, speed up, slow down, slow down. So you have to show it, you have to see that. So that's one thing. Just don't, you know, just don't go to sleep. Okay, another one. Uh, don't confuse acceleration with velocity. Whenever I stop and turn, the only way I can turn is to stop. I gotta stop going forward and start going backwards. So at that moment, my velocity is zero. But at that moment, it's changing. If I stop, my velocity is zero and my acceleration is zero. The moment I start moving, I start from a zero velocity and go. So remember, at any instant, you cannot change, but you can be changing. Okay? So something thrown up is going upwards, and then it comes down. It's got to stop and come down. But it doesn't, when you throw it in the air, it would be a pretty interesting world if things just stopped, hovered there for a while, and then came down. They don't. They're constantly changing, slowing down, speeding up. Acceleration down to slow down, down to speed up, and down at the moment that the velocity is zero, that we're changing. Don't confuse the two. You can have a high velocity on the freeway and you want very gentle changes, low acceleration. You can have a low velocity and have a high acceleration by just stepping on the gas at the stoplight or braking to a stop. Okay, and the last thing that I'll say right now, what time's time? Okay, so we're at how much? 13, 14, 15 minutes? No, two minutes left. Okay. So uh, the last thing is don't confuse acceleration with force. We're going to get to force later. So this is a subtle point. And so many times professors will and books will speak in, in a way that's really not right. Acceleration does not cause, I'm being picky here, a change in velocity. It doesn't cause you to speed up. It doesn't cause you to slow down. It doesn't cause you to turn. Acceleration describes how abruptly or gently you're changing your motion. It describes it. Why that happens has to do with your cranking on the wheel, pressing the gas, pressing the brake. Right? So why it accelerates it's going to be the topic after kinematics or force analysis. This just said, this just tells you how gradual or abrupt and speeding up, slowing down, or turning. Or uh, I think we're good. We got the units. We got some clarity here. We just got to uh, work some numbers. You can look at some graphs and things like that. And uh, cool. Yeah, that's good.